This, this lesson is designed to give a better sense, maybe, um, at least to help out with how you can navigate around the unit circle, um, especially on these special angles, but even when they're not that special. And it may end up that I take a couple of videos to do this because I am trying to keep between five and ten minutes. So the first thing to realize that the special angles in the first quadrant, I've labeled them A, B, and C, are the angles that I get when I break a uh, half of the circle into six pieces, and then I can go one pi six, two pi six, three pi six, four pi six, five pi six, six pi six, um, and so C is in radians where I get to when I do one pi six, and A is where I get to when I do two pi six or pi thirds. And then the other one is where I take the pi radians and break it up into four equal pieces so that I have one pi fourths, two pi fourths, three pi fourths, four pi fourths. Um, and so B in ra the place, the angle that gets me to B um, in radians is pi fourths. So what I'm focusing on now is, is the exact value of the coordinates, but also kind of getting an intuitive feel for the decimal approximations for those coordinates as well. So that when you're staring at the unit circle, um, you kind of feel what they should be. You haven't really memorized it exactly. You know that the three values that you're working with are a half, square root of 2, over 2, and square root of 3 over 2. But you're just trying to say, well, who goes where? And when I look at the ordered pair 1 half, I see that the x-coordinate seems about halfway. It's nowhere near 0.7 or 0.9, which are the, the one um, decimal place approximations of square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 3 over 2. So it's nowhere near those, so it's got to be a half for the x-coordinate. So as I'm looking at, well, what are the coordinates of a? I'm going, well, the x-coordinate has to be a half, and then the y coordinate I'm judging, is that up there at 0.7 or is that up there at 0.9? And, you know, pretty close to 0.9. So I'm thinking, okay, that's got to be square root of 3 over 2. Similarly on, on B, I'm like, okay, so what is x coordinate? x coordinate about there. Um, so yeah, it's about 0.7. Okay, cool. So that's got to be the square root of 2 over 2. And the y coordinate is also 0.7. That's also got to be square root of 2 over 2. Certainly nowhere near 0.9. It's not near a half. So all right, fine. And then finally on C, yeah, the x coordinate is the big one. And the y coordinate, yeah, looks like it's about a half. All right, so what good is that? Now all of a sudden you're able to, to talk about um, the sine and cosine, or maybe I should say cosine and sine, of any of these angles. So, you know, randomly picking one, let's say I say that the angle is pi thirds, and I want to say what's the cosine of pi thirds, and I say, oh, okay, so cosine of pi thirds. Pi thirds is, is that one. We already identified that. And so cosine is the x-coordinate of A. And I'm trying to circle. There we go. The x-coordinate of A. All right, fine. It's a half. So now what we're going to do, given, given all of this, is we're going to look at angles that aren't in the first quadrant. So now we're going to look at um, a little bit of the symmetry of the circle and how it can help us to figure out what the um, sine or cosine um, would be of another angle that isn't necessarily coterminal to pi thirds, but is similar enough to pi thirds that understanding pi thirds helps us to figure that out. So the first thing to kind of realize is that point A and B have the same y coordinate. And points A and D have the same x coordinate, and that when I'm looking across, if I say, okay, so A is up here, and D is down here, that the y coordinates are the negatives of each other. 
So all of that really kind of helps us. So for example, let's say I was trying to figure out what is the cosine of pi thirds plus pi. Now there's a couple of ways to kind of think of the cosine of pi thirds plus pi. Of course, one way to do it is to just go, okay, pi thirds plus pi, that's some, some thing that I can simplify and, and figure it out and then go to where that is and, and kind of do it directly. But if I think about pi as one half of a revolution, then it's possible to say, okay, well here's, let me do it this way, sorry, here's pi thirds plus a half of a revolution. So let me kind of back that up and I'll do the pi thirds plus half of a revolution. So this green part is pi, this orange part is pi thirds, and the total angle is pi thirds plus pi, which I can call whatever I want. You know, I could say, oh, that's theta or, or whatever. And thinking about it, I go, okay, so the x coordinate of that, well, the x coordinate over here was a half, and this is just the other side that's going to be negative a half. And so what some people talk about is since everything about point C and, and sine and cosine and everything for that angle has to do with pi thirds, I am going to take a line straight from C straight down to the x-axis, make a little right angle, and call what I've got right there what's called the reference angle. So let me do that over here. So I'm, I'm over here. That's my angle call that theta. All of the action is happening right there in what at least my open math is calling theta bar. Where theta bar is the reference angle. The positive angle that if you thought of it in the first quadrant, just that amount in the first quadrant, that you would be able to figure out the size of the x and y coordinates. So let's go back. You know, we see the size of those x and y coordinates, 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. So over here we go, oh, okay. So the size of this is 1 half square root of 3 over 2. But wait a minute. I'm over here in the third quadrant, and so it's going to be negative, because I'm on the negative side of, on the x's, and also negative, because I'm on the negative side of the y's. So looking back over here, that's point C, negative one-half, square root of three over two, so once again, that cosine of that angle, negative one-half. So I, I put these, um, these guys over here to make it sort of easy to say, well, what the heck angle is that, Rick? You know, pi thirds plus pi, what the heck are we talking about there? Um, so let's do that. So what, oops, I erased this guy. Um, so all right, here I am, pi thirds plus pi but pi is 3 pi thirds. So what we're talking about here is 1 pi thirds, 2 pi thirds, 3 pi thirds, 4 pi thirds. So that this statement is probably a little bit clearer in the final analysis to say the cosine of 4 pi thirds equals negative 1 half. And that reference angle for all that thought, the reference angle is just plain old pi thirds. All right, I'm going to stop here and, and do something just with the reference angle with a, with a yucky, not such a nice angle, but I'm going to do that in another video because we are just about at 10 minutes.